have a ringmaster uh-huh. of everything when it comes to the museum and P.T. Barnum himself. So why don't you tell us a little bit about him and why the museum is in Bridgeport? Well, that's a great question. A lot of people do think that the Barnum Museum in Bridgeport on Main Street was his house. Uh, it never was his house. Barnum actually was a museum person, and before he died, he wanted to give one final gift to his adopted home. He lived here in Bridgeport, and he created what was originally called the Barnum Institute of Science and History. It was never a circus museum. That was a completely different enterprise, but he was born in Bethel. He is, he is a Connecticut native. He was born in Bethel, um, really made his, his life and his enterprise in New York City like so many people in Fairfield County, right? Things don't change. Um, But he saw Bridgeport, uh, and this is in the 1840s. He saw Bridgeport is being beautiful. The the shoreline was beautiful. It had an active harbor. The train lines were already established. The Huntington Turnpike Company was already a primary artery through the state. So he saw this as 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 a wonderful place to create a utopia, an industrialized community that welcomed people from different countries Trees, different backgrounds, different cultures that can work together to be a manufacturing hub, you know, second to New York. So that's that's why we're here today. This was his beloved home. I have a feeling if P.T. Barnum was still around, he'd probably be an executive on our board. <laughs> and it really helps you yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. And he's exhausting. He's been dead over 100 years, and he's the only man that exhausts me. So... <laughs> No doubt. (laughs) Now, and there's a reason for that because the museum has faced its fair share of challenges. And we'll start off in 2010 when it was struck by a tornado, which you were there when it happened. And if you think Bridgeport, you usually don't think Tornado Alley either. No, and um, crazy. I've I've been here, I came to the museum in 1998. So I've been here a long time. became the director in 2005, but museum went through some humps, and in 2010, you know, finances were good, a, a plan for the future was put into place, we're already going, the, the, the stock, the market crashed, remember the, the whole craziness, but in 2010, um, in June, uh, June tw- uh, 24th, actually, at 2.15 in the afternoon, um, I was just around the corner on McCleavy Green, if you know downtown Bridgeport. Um, I was setting up a program, you know, uh, in the Playhouse on the Green Theater, and I went outside to just walk around the block to the museum, and the sky turned, and I was like, this is like, I I can wait for this to pass. So I and the uh, director of the Playhouse went back inside. He couldn't shut the door behind him. He literally, I was like, Chris, what's the matter? And he goes, the door won't shut. And with that, this thunderous roar, just blocked the the outside glass door. we couldn't see anything outside and in those quick seconds my life completely turned when we could see again trees limbs were down on top of cars glass windows downtown windows are big they're like nine feet they just shattered all over the place it was like what just happened um now if this happened in the midwest everybody would be like yeah tornado's coming what did we, what did anybody know? Everybody was outside tr- helping people. And I was just hoping we'd see, um, you know, turning the corner, I'd see the dome still standing. And thank God, a testament to 19th century engineers, the dome was up, but the windows were blown out. The curtains were blowing, glass was everywhere. A massive tree uh, on the People's Bank property fell and just scraped in the museum. Literally, there's a third story patio on the big people's bank building where there's you know a patio for like plastic patio furniture for employees that stuff hit the historic barn and building with so much force that you can still see the plastic embedded in the stone and drilled into the wood uh, moldings of the windows it, it, it there before the grace of god nobody was killed people were hurt but in the museum everybody was fine the staff was fine thank god but um And with that, there has not been a moment of rest trying to figure out a EF1 tornado impact on a nationally significant building uh, with collections. So yeah, tell me about those collections Uh, that you said you had, was it 20,000 pieces in yeah. there they have to, that you have to worry about? And did you lose any? What happened to them? They must have been soaked or blown with the wind. 
That, that is so kind of you to ask. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a museum. You know, if it's an office, you throw out the furniture, you can't throw out the 4,000 year old mummy. I, it just doesn't happen. But there were about, um, we're estimated somewhere in and about 20,000 objects, artifacts, documents, material pieces in the historic building at the time. Um, and much like a hospital, every single thing needs its own doctor, needs its own care. You don't take care of a painting the same way you take care of textiles. It's, it's completely different. So we had to quick stabilize everything. You can't touch it because also we had to deal with insurance considerations. What did happen though um, is water started pouring into the basement where we have an archives, uh, archive shelving. Never again will it be in the basement but the water started pouring in and the small staff just became a chain gang to move documents and books out of the way, laying them out flat so we could start flipping things over to air dry. Um, and sadly, one of Barnum's autobiographies from 1872 was put in a place that was missed during the rotation. And a few days later when we found it, it was just molded over. Um, so that, that was a total loss. The good thing is that Barnum had, there were so many autobiographies from 1872. We had a number of them in the collection so that, um, so it was replaceable. But um, we still have things in conservation laboratories. Um, it, it, it's truly incredible. I, I mean, the most damaged object was Tom Thumb's uh, carriage from 1850s and it's wonderful but it's wood it's leather it's textile it's metal it's it's composite materials and everything is hygroscopic at a different level so that's it and I always equate it to like the worst hair on the planet you know so the layers of complexity just piled up and piled up and then um not to bring us deeper down this hole so that the tornado was 2010 in uh 2011 we had to batten down the hatches for Hurricane Irene, which compounded the damage to the building. And then the following year was Superstorm Sandy. So in those three years, it was the trifecta of disasters that, that, that's just cumulative.